I'm an SLM seeker. I'm from Sri Lanka. So yeah, I just came to Australia by boat in 2012. And I was held up in a detention center over three and a half years. And recently, last four months ago, I got released from the detention center in living with community in Australia. At the moment, I'm living in Perth. And I just hang around everywhere in Australia, just talking with people, like sharing my experience in the detention. I left Sri Lanka 2012, August 12th, midnight. <laughs> I got the boat and we, 22 days, it's very terrible journey in the deep water. <laughs> so I still very unbelievable think I reached to Australia because it's very hard journey. I never, I don't have any ideas before its journeys look like that, so it's very hard journey. Last few days we haven't got enough water, no food or nothing, anything, just we drink salty water last four days. Yeah, we came, 58 people and a small board, 22 days, it's very hard journey <laughs> to explain, so always thinking about that. So. Beautiful is always very dangerous. <laughs> it's very beautiful, but it's very deep and very dangerous. <laughs> it's heavy rain and big waves, and we, we thought, are we going to be die everyone? So very scary at the midnight and heavy rain and thundering and storm. But then we thought, oh, it's going to be die everyone, <laughs> but. After a few hours, it's going to be calm and we all survive and I finally we reached to Cocos Island <laughs> in September, 2nd of September in 2012. Yeah, we just landed in Cocos Island, the customs officers in Australia, so they, they catch the board and they take us to the Cocos Island, there's a small camp. And they, because we was very hungry at the moment, last four days we haven't got enough food. <laughs> then, yeah, we thought, oh, it's going to be, get a good life. And they take to the camp and they just told us to just see it and they take the name and stuff. So um, I didn't have any ideas. They just put the tag on my hand. It says, uh, OGN001. <laughs> so, um, and it's so one of board IDs. So I just saw that number. It's my name is changed to my name changed to number. So, so I didn't have any ideas about that. But when I get that detention, and I thought, oh, this the this is my number. So until I died. <laughs> So it's, it, it was very hard time at the time, at the moment, I feel I was, I left, I, I missed something. You know, it's, they, because they can't remember our names. <laughs> so they mentioned the numbers or that, because I just remember past happening in my life. They take us to the camp and they feed the food and stuff and give the, some, get some clothes and tones get shower and we just hang around in the camp few hours and they the same day they take to the uh, Cocos Island medical camp and they started to inquiring and they did some interviews and staffs and finally they we had a meeting so um, with immigration that night and they said uh, we changed the policy so I have a I I haven't any thoughts about that because I thought oh, we going we already reached to Australia so we have a good life and we're going to be free and stuff you know then they said oh, who come by board they're all going to be sent to Naru and Manus then so then my I, my heart was break at the moment. So I thought, oh, what's going to be happening in my life? What's going to be happening in my future? I was thinking last, then they thought, oh, this is the policy. Uh, after 2012, 13th of August, we'll come by board. They're all going to be sent to Naru and Manus Island. You're going to be go processing there. 
then you want to wait we don't know how long to 21 countries going to be ask the refugees in offshore processing center so if uh, if they want to take the refugees and you can apply and you want to wait until they take to your take their country so provide you a visa then I don't have any choice at the moment I can't go back my home then yeah I agreed to go there <laughs> then we had an interview and we stayed there for I think just I was staying in a Christmas island just 10 days or something and 2012 September 14th the first lot sent to Naru yeah, it's a terrible place. It's still I have no words to describe how look like that. It's very hard at the moment. Just green tents. Then I saw some army officers. They work in Australians. Then I thought, oh my God, it's going. They're going to be put in a army camp <laughs> because the tents, all the tent, have green tent and stretchers, bed and stars, no power, nothing, anything. Just three toilets to use to us. So it's very hard at the moment. <laughs> Then few hours, I'm going to be crazy. So <laughs> then, Salvation Army work there, and Wilson Security also work. Then they just look after us at the at the moment. They, they just Salvation Army is made a contract, I think, to doing welfare things and security things. Trying at the towards security things was happening with um, Wilson Security still running the Wilson Security the camp and Transfield I think yeah then yeah after that we don't have a choice then we need to survive and coping <laughs> with the, the things happening then we don't know what's going to be happen when we going to be processing when we going to be go free or nothing anything just be in the camp with nothing to doing just sharing the things with friends. So when I'm talking with my friends, they say, what's going to be happen to Ravi Ash? And I will ask them, then I ask them, oh, what's going to be happen? They don't have ideas. I don't have any ideas. Then even if we ask the security or solution army, or oh, what's going to be happen when we're going to go to Australia? Because that's dream, you know, it's first time when we reach to Yaha without are we going to be go Australia. It's free country, it's very humanitarian. And peaceful countries are we going to get good life they're completely destroyed at the moment when we get to Nauru so it's still I'm it's still I'm not out of that mental war you know so it's physically mentally affected on my mind it's still I'm not right way in with that so yeah, it's very hard time at the moment very terrible hot and stones everywhere it's green tent stretchers nothing anything we don't have anything <laughs> so we don't have a life to just no future very dark and when we ask them so we don't know ask the questions so of when, when we go into australia they say oh we don't have any ideas about that it's still immigration or government or naruan government want to take the decision or something like that stars they're talking then they say very soon very soon <laughs> I was there for that over three and a half years. The <laughs> I thought, you know, I had the two meanings. Of I don't know two words. I don't know and very soon because I had that all the time. Very soon, very soon. While three and a half years, while I was in Naru, then I thought people want to know what's the feelings and happening in Nauru in detention how people surviving so English is my third language then I started to writing and drawing myself express my feelings and I contact new people in Australia on Facebook and most of real Australians they give the voice for SLM seekers I'm really proud of them having a friend with friend for like friends then so um, now almost I see most of friends and I say my thanks to face to face was of people in everywhere <laughs> so still I miss someone to say thanks but because always they send the message and encourage me and share their kind and love 
because there's no life when we in a deep dark started to Facebook page uh, Salem Seekers in Naru and share the message and writing my drawings and I uh, sharing my drawings and writings then first person I contact Victoria she's, she's the first person I contact Australians when uh, while I was in Naru so after that I just made many friends on Facebook and started to chatting and sharing the message and sharing the things my feelings every day yeah that's that page is the main thing so gave me good friends in Australia my first drawing in there then I posted on Facebook and then Sarah was copied that and she drew that and she sent a message on me oh Ravi I drew this one so I was very exciting see that so <laughs> because that was the beautiful better than mine <laughs> what I draw so I think is that one you, you got the copies of that I think that's the Sarah's draw that so I was really happy at the moment um, yeah because people started to listening voice from the hell in Naro you know it's my drawing someone in Australia and they just hanging with them that was very exciting things I thought uh, still humanism is hanging around in the world, <laughs> the world you know it's because we are very disappointed at the moment and completely destroyed so no helpless like helpless people so someone who look just sharing the things like like that so it's it's make it a bit happy and encouraged to doing more you know so yeah then after that I did many things drawings and writings and that's my time spending with that so all the time I just drawing or writing and doing some good stuffs in the camp and talking with different nationalities friends and learn new I was learned lots of things in the best things I was learned in the detention center tolerance and patience that was very important to humans <laughs> I learned that from in the detention center patience and tolerance because I know it's Australia is multicultural different nationalities this all talking about the feelings really it's, um, it's yeah I, I, I just draw this one this one is I draw when I was in a prison in work so um, it's talking about uh, why you punish me like this so <laughs> then he said oh they locked up me in uh, my aims and dreams hope and feelings are everything's locked up with me <laughs> so it's because yeah we, we don't have any I haven't seen any life in there, <laughs> just hanging, so always just sitting like this in the dark, <laughs> thinking about that and I just draw that one and I just ask to people to help and um, so our life in, then I draw this for Australians, so asking to help all us. <laughs> Yeah, and we can live everywhere is uh, because if, if when we free so we can when we have a free life we can breathe freely but when 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 we in the cage or we don't have any future <laughs> we couldn't see anything so very hard to breathe so freedom is human oxygen so it's my thought because when you have a free we can breathe freely so otherwise it's very hard to breathe in the detention life it's very hard especially who have faced lots of suffering and trauma and torturing mental mentally war with their past life it's very hard to when they get out from their own country where left their country face lots of suffering and problems then they started to again face like the things it's make too hard you know it, because it's that's why I'm, I got my experience so I got it's a, such a great trauma and torture experience in my country so when I came here it's I got mentally torturing like a feeling nothing anything with me I'm completely lost in the dark I don't have anything I couldn't see my future 
so very hard to breathe at the moment. So I thought the you really freedom is a human oxygen. Uh, that's I, I draw that one uh, while I was in Nauru. Some of my friends they have got uh, released from the camp, and just eleven we left with my friends. So I thought, oh, then I I feel oh I need to get out from the detention. I I need to f I I want to be a free bird. <laughs> then I feel like that. Then I just started to draw that. <laughs> And sharing on my Facebook on Refugee Day, I think, yeah, last year. It's very hard to explain because it's still camp look like that. The people with green tent and now just in a white tent and no bed, no stretcher. It's just uh, stretchers, we sleep more over six, seven months and yeah, it's very hard situation. It's r small stones everywhere. It's a very terrible hard. We couldn't sleep. I used to sleep for last two, two and a half years, used the sleeping pills to get some sleep. So I took the sleeping tablet at 12 o'clock, then I, I'm going to bed early morning, 4 o'clock or something. So until I couldn't sleep and it's very hard to sleep and morning 7 o'clock we need to work up because otherwise we can't sleep, it's very hard, like a boy <laughs> boiling. So yeah, just three hours just three hours two hours two and a half hours like that sleeping and just one time or two time meals maximum per day <laughs> mostly used to smoke cross <laughs> spending time with that and yeah. still i couldn't find the words to describe to write about not how i survive in there so th i'm all the time be just feeling very down and started to writing or uh, drawing, spending time. Finally, I was held up in a detention center in Maita. After that six months, then we ask oh, what's going to be happened. Then they say, oh, it's still, uh, we send, uh, send you all the files to immigration minister. So it, it's still not signed. And when, we, when he signed, then we will let you know when you're going to go go yeah i was waiting more than six months there to <laughs> and finally i had message from my case manager the immigration minister grant visa to let us to living in community that was exciting so i didn't know what i'm going to do <laughs> well, yeah it was very amazing things happening in our life so, so i can't forget that then I need to, I, I was very exciting and very happy at the moment, then I just need to sh share my happiness with my friends and uh, I share on my Facebook, so I, I, si I got signed my visa today, thank you, I just say thanks for everyone and the people keep asking, oh you, you can live here, you be such a beautiful paper, nice paper. They say, you can come and live with us, and you can come and live with us. Then I need to choose the place to where I'm going to live in. Then I chose the place to live in Perth. And, <laughs> and finally, I get out from the detention. Then security guards, they leave me in the airport. Then I was free loss. I'm free. That's, I just because my tight, uh, my hands and my feet are tight at the moment while I was in the detention. So when they're free in the airport, then I said, oh, I just breathe my freedom oxygen at the moment. <laughs> so yeah, then I fly to Sydney with my friends. Yeah, it's amazing, such a beautiful people. And I started to working with publish my book. And finally December, 9th of December, I did my first book launching in Melbourne. It was Amazing Night with uh, Through the Writing Through the Fans with Janet. Such an amazing night. Then after that, then I did my book launching with Amnesty International last month, January, yeah, January in, in Sydney and Newcastle. Really, it's, it was a dream while I was in a detention. It's, I thought I need to publish my book because I, this is my third language. English is my third language. I work very hard and I learn many things. Then I thought I need to publish this book. 
then when I launched the book in Melbourne, then before I got the book, I, I haven't touched that book before people touched the really good things because I, I went to, I just entered the building where I was launched the book. I saw people just holding my book with them. I was so excited to see everyone. Oh my God, I haven't got the book, but they have touched the book. So <laughs> then after Janet gave me the book and I just hold it and open it. So I was cried with happiness. So it's amazing things in the life. It's a really very amazing things in the life. So still I'm very exciting. When I saw my book, so I'm very exciting and I just proud of myself for oh, yeah I did this. Still I can't believe I did that. <laughs> Mm, yeah. When we send the message or when we send the sharing, the drawings and writings, the people doing amazing things in all around Australia, then people started to reading and just hanging the banners and stuff when they're doing some good things. Um, yeah, that should be me. Sometimes it's make how we, we can just get some relax or people keep trying behalf of us. So they just give the voice for us and looking forward to see us in Australia, then help to get out from the detention and stuff. People come to my book launching and they got the book and s get the sign from me. So it's, it's amazing things to think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still, I'm, I can't imagine how my, how it's, it's, it's happening, you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just talking about, I'm just, b because it's good experience, you know, in a detention wise. It's g such a good experience. So people want to know how people surviving there and us look like that. So it's very important things to people because it's my experience. I, if, because my experience is giving someone to being, coping with good things. So that's why I'm just thinking all the time. So I just coping with my writings and drawings. And that's why I hold my book today. I'm really happy for that. So it's kind of help to people in a detention center. So I used to that book for friends in Naru and Manus. Sometimes, yeah, because it's very hard when we while in a detention center. So we can't help to back home. Someone's have families and stuff. So I just use this book for friends to help. And I got, I, I got the message from one of my friends. She's while with my Facebook friends more than two years or something. Yeah, then she asked me, uh, Ravi, we would like to hear your poetry in the Let Them Stay campaign. So I was so exciting. So I just, I say, okay, I can read my poetry. Then I went there, then they introduced me and I read my poetry. It's, it's so amazing things. Yeah, it's really very nice. I re I'm always talking with my friends in Naru and Manus. Then I said, I'm now breathe my freedom oxygen. You should, one day you should be get that. So just hang in there, be good and follow good things and try to make yourself to following good things when you get out from the detention. So yeah, that's the message I'm always sharing with my friends to encourage them to doing something and draw or drawing or writing or singing or anything. So that, that kind of things are mostly help to people, you know. Yeah. It's dream, you know, it's, it's, it's my dream. So if they close the camp and bring my all the friends in Naru and Manus back to Australia, then let them stay and free them. I just want to say lastly one thing, <laughs> so um, really I'm, I need to say thanks for everyone and I need to ask something to Australians, so just give them voice for fr my friends in detention, try to get out, try to get out my friends from the detention center and sharing the kind and love with them and make them life they are good in Australia.